The Biafran War was one of the most brutal and bloody conflicts of modern times. Also known as the Nigerian Civil War, it left a million dead and millions more displaced. It also shaped so much of our thinking on secession and independence. And yet today, it's largely forgotten. So what was the conflict all about, and why was it so especially significant? As I've noted many times, the international community has a deep aversion to secession. States particularly detest unilateral secession. However, while we might like to think that these ideas have existed for centuries, in truth, the current thinking evolved over several decades after 1945 and the founding of the United Nations. In particular, contemporary attitudes to secession can be traced back to two very specific cases of separatism that occurred in Africa in the 1960s. However, while Katanga's secession set out the idea of opposing unilateral secession, these ideas would not be truly cemented until the Biafran War just a few years later. Since the end of the Nigeria Biafra Civil War in 1970, in one form or the other, there is always the spirit of Biafra. The spirit became a movement when Rafa was wicked, launched the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra Massa. Because the movement used to be a spirit, it transformed over time across several landscapes, under several leaders. At one point, it was simply the Biafra of the spirit. At other moments, it was the Biafra of the mind. And then arrived Nam de Kano. Watch. Between them, these two cases serve to underscore the idea that the principle of respecting the territorial integrity of states no longer applied just to threats from other countries. Henceforth, it would also be applied to internal attempts to secede. But the Biafran War also stands out for another reason. Also known as the Nigerian Civil War, it's now largely forgotten in the wider world. And yet, when it took place in the late 1960s, it was widely considered to be the humanitarian tragedy of its era. Over the course of three years it lasted, it's estimated that well over a million people died, either directly in the fighting or as an indirect result of the famine and illness arising from it. So, because you know he's not going there to negotiate the Afra, you know that. Of course, we know that very well. Okay. What will happen to him is this. Already we know that some of them live in Abuja and Lagos Axis. There is nobody that speaks for the Yoruba nation that lives in anywhere in Igbo land or in Biafra land. There is no prominent Hausa person that lives anywhere in Biafra land. What we are saying to this man and his life is that, of course, they will underestimate us because those that have gone before us have made threats and didn't carry it out. This time it is different. If we can place the name Biafra on satellite, if we can broadcast so that the whole world can hear us every blessed day, if we are in over 70 countries around the world with over 5 million listeners, there is nothing we cannot do. This time around, things are very, very different, believe you me. Very, very different, and very soon the world will hear about it. Nigeria is not a civilized country. People will behave like animals. They are not reasonable enough. They are not disciplined enough. They are not mentally developed enough to run a transparent civil society. For them, they have a feudal mindset where you have the ruling class and, you know, a multitude of poverty-stricken people who never utters any word in rebellion or to even ask questions about their plight. That is one thing we are determined to challenge. Don't you think you insult a lot of Nigerians with that? I'm being very kind, to be honest. I could have used far more harsher words to describe them. <laughs>